All right, boys. That was Lewis. Man, that's just a shame. Does that have blood on it? I think it does. Wow. Was her brother? Oh man. Some of this game, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of hard to play. It's kind of hard to sit here, listen to this because I just want to fucking tear up. From Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. She was done. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. Oh no. Don't tell me she just left Edie alone. Oh, okay, so I could have tried to come up here all I wanted to. There's just no, nothing left of the stairwell. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. Probably easier for her. But I feel like it would have been hard on Edie. I wish we'd stayed. Oh my god, look at all this missing posters. But I understand why we left. Don Finch. Could have at least closed the fridge, you know, just saying. There's still power over here, so, you know, it's just that you're just wasting energy right there. Power bill's going up, and uh, it's not like you're paying for it. Just saying. My mom saying. ended up leaving everything behind. Guess it was just too painful. Wow. What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe yeah. I should have come sooner. She was way up here. Oh, wow. But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. Here's the house. Jeez. I feel like those are the little people from uh, Lewis's little. Uh... Yeah, they are. They're from Lewis's story, his imagination. 90th birthday. All right, boys. Here it is. Time to hear Edith's story. That whole last day, Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word until supper when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific. I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last- I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom sailed the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Or that Edie had a key to it. The thing you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your story. 
I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning. Okay? It's true, the Finches. Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled awful. You know, I've seen that house every day of my life. But I never thought I'd go back to it. When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. I got turned around. For a while, I wondered. I started seeing things. Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. But when I saw them, they felt old friends. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Or maybe I came back to them. Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and... Eat it. What are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! M Mom, you're gonna rip it! Let go! I kicked and screamed, but... Mom dragged me to the car. I never saw Great-Grandma Edie again. The next morning, the van came to pick her up, but she was already gone. After that, we moved around a lot. We both tried to make the best of it. A few years went by. Blown it. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. <coughs> the rest happened pretty quickly. 2016? She got better for a while. And then she didn't. And then I was alone. The last finch left alive. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes and appreciate how strange and brief all of this is.
This journal was supposed to be for you. But now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you. And tell you all these stories myself. But I guess if you're reading this now, things didn't work out that way. This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. Well, uh, that caught me off guard. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed.